Excellent. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Wes. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my partner, Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Wes, Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics, smash them together to make cranky projects. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Let's jump right into the show. Today's coupon code is print in place. That's right. So if you want to check out anything in the Adafruit shop, use coupon code print in place and you'll get 10% off your order. Speaking of orders, we have some free deals going on. Heading on over to the website at adafruit.com slash free. You can see we have all the different tiers. For $99 or more, you get a free Adafruit Promo Proto that's half size breadboard. For orders that are $149 or more, you get that Promo Proto plus a free iron on skill badge. That's one of these randomly selected. For orders that are 200 or more, you get those two things, plus free UPS ground shipping for continental US only. And then for orders that are 299 or more, you get all that plus a Circuit Playground Express. So check out adafruit.com slash free for all the details on all the things I just said. <laughs> Same day delivery is an option for folks in New York City. So if you are uh, need some parts and it's the morning, you can get your parts delivered that same day you order it, which is pretty bananas. We have newsletters that happen once a day, and that's called Adafruit Daily. <laughs> AdafruitDaily.com is where you want to go. Check out the categories. We have some really nice ones out there. We have one uh, that happens once a week. It's called the newsletter, the new new newsletter. Adafruit.com slash newsletter for that one. Both options you need to subscribe manually. CircuitPython meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It happens in the Discord server, so check out Adafruit, uh, Adafruit's Discord server. Discord.gg slash Adafruit is the invite code. We're hanging out there right now, and there's a bunch of folks um, normally come in there. So that's where we are, and that's where the meeting happens. It happens at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Mondays. It's a great opportunity to let the community know what you're working on or listen in to the community and what they're working on. Go to jobs.adafruit.com if you are interested in looking for some new opportunities or if you are an employer looking for some maker skills, check out Jobs Board. That's jobs.adafruit.com. Check it. I think that's it of, of housekeeping, right? Yeah. Shout out to everybody in the chat rooms over on YouTube, Discord, and Hello. Facebook. How's our audio? Hello. <laughs> really fun little bingo activity. You can play along with the show. Kirby posted a, bingo? a really good bingo card that Caitlin's dad made. Let me see. <laughs> like if our audio drops, oh, or right, right, right. time lapse, or we talk that. about the slicer. Yeah, these are things that uh, <laughs> always happen, happen yeah. on the show. That's great. Check it out and I interact mean, with yeah. the show. That I'll way. put that in the show notes later. <laughs> By the way, there's show notes in the bottom if you want to see any, mostly everything that we share is a link. <laughs> it's normally in the description of the YouTube video. I'm posting this in the Discord as well. <laughs> Excellent, yeah, it's pretty funny. Oh, I forgot to wear my make code shirt. Oh, I guess the show start over again. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, well, um, we had a very fun uh, weekend. We were traveling, went to Disney World, and we brought our Pi Gamer with us. So we figured we'd uh, test drive it <laughs> uh, in front of the pool. So we had a lot of fun uh, bringing it with us and kind of putting it through its paces, just yeah, with know, this testing show, it in real world. What this shot is showing uh, how good it looks like in the sun. You can see all the new pixels. Of course, the screen is nice and bright. Uh, so you're able to play this in line or while you're waiting for your lunch. That's so. right. It's got about a five hour battery life, depending on the screen brightness and how much you're using it and all that. But uh, this just uh, goes to show that this is a really <laughs> good gaming platform to go on the go. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get stopped at security or anything. So well, yeah, the, the security guard right was through. actually quite interesting. He's like, I've never seen this before. What is this? I'm like, oh, it's a new prototype we're working on. And not just the Pi Gamer, the Pi Badge as well. Works excellent out on the go, nice small. Just fits around your necklace. Uh -huh. I should have put a bunch of the pins on there as well mm, to cool. do a all-in-one yeah. pin trading. And so it was a fun test. You. Yeah, and um, you know I had the case in pretty hot climate. It's pretty hot out there. It didn't melt. It didn't fall apart. It still jujed pretty well. Um, so this is the case that we'll be releasing next week. We're still putting it through its paces and whatnot. Um, but hey, there you go. We uh, we brought it with us while we were uh, at Disney World. 
And uh, it's kind of nice because you're like, well, why don't you just use your iPhone and play games? Like my nephew uses my iPhone, and while he's using it, I get to um, play slash work. Yeah, I'm like offloading videos. It's just a little computer to me in my pocket, so I can't really yeah, use it to play it's games. Small and thin, and it's small enough to fit in your pocket, and uh, put in your carrying bag, and yeah, you know, away you go. Yeah, and Pretty with cool. Mate Code, we just brought the laptop along, and we were able to actually edit a couple of the games on there. Yeah. Yeah. Continue playing. Excellent. So if you guys uh, missed it, we have a 3D model of the Pi Gamer PCB that includes all the components that is released. It's on GitHub. We have a blog post on Adafruit's blog that you can check out to download the uh, STL the step file or the Fusion 360 file. Yep. Very cool. So that's out there. Let's see what else do we have here. Start posting yep. up in the chats. Check out learn.adafruit.com for all the learn guides that came out this week. There is a awesome new learn guide all about the Pi Gamer. So if you are just getting your Pi Gamer, um, definitely check out the learn guide and walk through it. See all the different um, features it has so you know everything. And uh, if there's any... Uh, I'm just reading this part over here. Yeah, so if you need to get CircuitPython set up or Arduino, it's all here on the sidebar. You can set it up. And uh, it's been really fun switching between everything. When I put, when we were working on this video, um, you know, I kind of had to make my own demos. And mm -hmm. it was really fun and easy to kind of whip up between. something really yeah. quick and just get those, those LEDs, uh, the NeoPixels lit up or get a bitmap loaded just to kind of make something really quick. Mm -hmm. um, so I was switching between everything. <laughs> Yeah, it was it's, it was very it's a lot fun. Of fun. <laughs> no, it, it, when it works, right, it, and everything was working, so it worked out really well. Uh, being able to switch between uh, all all the different platforms and show different demos. Yeah, so some of the demos we want to show off, I think, are some of the games. So yep. load up some of the ones that you're working on. We'll talk about these in a little bit. <laughs> so so far, I just have Meta Tetris. I think we talked about it last week, um, but that's one that uh, I really like and enjoy because it uh, it has really nice sound effects. It's got a nice menu. You can turn up the brightness or turn down the brightness of the NeoPixels, turn up the, uh, the volume of the, of the onboard speaker if you like. And uh, it's a it's pretty, uh, pretty nice platform. I think I just shut off my, yeah, I muted it. So there you go. And uh, it's been a lot of fun to play this one. Um, I've been working on like a, a little kind of demo game and make code. So I guess we can do that. So to switch it up, to switch your platforms, it's pretty easy. I'm going to just double tap on the reset button, and that'll bring me into the, do the bootloader. You get a nice graphic, tells you what to do. It goes to arcade.makecode.com. Sweet. So I'll go ahead and do that, and uh, see if we can load this up. Uh, I like to use the beta editor, because it does web USB. So the link for that, I'm going to paste it in all the chats right there. And over here in YouTube land, I have a YouTube window right over here. Here is the Make Code Arcade. Y'all can start playing with this right now. It has a built-in simulator, so you can play around uh, with, with different games before you have the hardware, which is really excellent. And it works with all sorts of different hardware. Make Code Arcade has a list of all the hardware that's compatible. Um, let's see, I posted it there, there. Let's go to Discord and post it there as well. There we go. So there's Make Code Arcade Beta. The beta is going to allow you to do web USB, which uh, I'm a huge fan of. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over to our screen capture window. I think this one's going to show me the the uh, you know a, a good frame rate over here. Okay, so this is the kind of game I'm working on. I basically took the Flappy demo and the Asteroid Galica demo and kind of smashed them together. So I'm, st I'm still learning a lot about this. Cause I'm not really much of a developer when it comes to software. Um, but it's been really uh, insightful and inspiring to kind of come up with this stuff and, and just kind of play around and, and make some fun little demos. So this is what I have so far. Let's go ahead and, and look at it over here on the side, see if it even loads. <laughs> yeah, let me turn the, the volume next. It's reload. So I'm like this little space duck, and I have like these uh, asteroids falling. And you have like that flappy duck uh, kind of controls where you have to kind of lift up. And I'm thinking to make this into like a survival game. Instead of making obstacles, you just kind of have to survive the waves of asteroids hitting you as a little duck. 
Um, so this demo kind of shows how you can animate different sprites. Um, they're, they're animating as they're falling. And uh, there's some particles right there and stuff. Uh, and also kind of learning how to use that, uh, that tool, the graphic asset tool um, that John Park talked about um, in, his, in his learn guide on how to make really polished games. So I followed his tutorial and put together uh, this background in Photoshop of like, this moon and like, this sort of Grand Canyon type environment. So that's the background. Um, and uh, you can click on your background image and tweak it here, but I don't recommend doing that. I'm, I recommend using the asset tool um, that John Park uh, documented. So if you head on over to the learn guide, you can see, um, you can walk through that. Pretty interesting, because um, it talks all about the, the color. There's only 16 colors to choose from, and these, they're them right over here. And then like if you're using Photoshop or a different graphics editor, you can set up your own color table, so you only use the colors that are in here. A lot of fun little uh, details like that. Um, but you can totally, totally do it. Uh, and then just playing around with uh, creating different sprites. So you can see the individual frames for sprites and then attaching them to your, your sprite. So those are fun. And then um, just kind of <laughs> learning how to optimize the game so that uh, the, you know, the frame rate's all, all squared away and works out well. Um, I think this is my older version. This is a funny thing. I need to like, figure out a better way to manage um, <laughs> my projects because uh, right now there isn't like a login. So all the projects that you create on one machine necessarily won't translate to another machine unless you take the actual UF2 file. Um, so this is an older version of my game. Gosh darn it, I wish I updated it. It's still running though, it's still working. So I guess I can offload it now. So let's go ahead and uh, let's sync it up. So over here in the gear, uh, just to be sure we're on the right platform, I'll, I'll sit change board. Here's all the different hardware um, that works. So Pi Badge is right there, Pi Gamer is right there. And if you have your own, if you spun up your own, um, you know, uh, your own hardware that uses the at SAMD51, you can click on this guy over here. But we're going to do the, uh, the Adafruit Pi Gamer because it's got that special code for the analog uh, joystick to work as a D-pad. So it's going to Kind of reload the stuff. Yeah, then... so uh, John's saying that the number one tip that he has for people getting into that is to use the demo, or the uh, the beta uh, website to get the, the, yes. the uh, joystick to work, yes. the thumbstick to, to work. The, that, yeah, so if you check the links in all the chats, I have the beta editor. Rule of thumb is to look at the at the slash and just say beta hashtag editor. That's, that's the ticket there. And John recommends saving it as a PNG file. That's a good idea too. Um, instead of the UF2, right? Because it's like smaller or something? Or is it just easier to go between them? It says it's the simplest way to do version control at the moment. Ah, I get you, yes, <laughs> that is right, version control, yeah. So as I was just saying, my issue was like, this is not the latest game. So it's not, a, it's not like the best uh, in terms of like frame rate. So it actually kind of gets a little slow. Um, how much time do I want to spend focusing? <laughs> All the time. Okay. <clears throat> it's not even the right camera. <laughs> okay, I think that's gonna work. Yeah, so it's still the old game, but uh, you know, you can play around with actual uh -huh. NeoPixels animating when you blow things up, and particles happen when you want, when you know, uh, a projectile overlaps an enemy, that sort of stuff happens. Um, there's no game kind of logic. There's no way to die right now. I didn't because it's I'm, I'm debugging the game for performance, um, so you can you can't die. <laughs> um, you get like a cool little camera shake effect, yeah, and just playing around with different notes and things. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, this works really really well compared to, in my opinion, I think it looks much better than like the NES emulator that we may or may not not have shown. The NES emulator has to kind of scale down the graphics a little yeah. bit. It has trouble it. reproducing some of the audio as well. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, you get full graphics on uh, on MakeCode Arcade. Yeah, it feels way more optimized. Right. You know, yeah. It is. Cause it's, yeah. yeah. That's too much fun. <laughs> oh, I guess you can. Oh yeah, I remember this is the older game. I was like, well, I thought I took that out. Yeah, I did. It's a different game. So that's what uh, I'm kind of working on, I guess. Um, Fun little game, uh, yeah. Very cool. Pi Gamer, excellent. 
Um, let's go ahead and look at the latest uh, demo for NES. So Lamar just sent this to me yesterday. She's working on a guide to release for everybody. So here we go, I'll double tap on the reset again to get into the bootloader. Whoops, maybe just do it once. Yes, just once. Okay, so now I'm in uh, bootloader mode. So over on my desktop, I'll go ahead and I guess I could show you guys. Uh, this one. So on my desktop, I got my Pygamer folder with all my UF2s. I got the NES Pygamer update, <laughs> and I'll just drop it on there. And then we'll go back into Wirecast and then switch over to the overhead, give it a second, and it'll boot up. There Ooh. she is. This is the latest update to the NES. Don't select anything yet, Pedro. I want to focus my camera. Really? Okay, that's pretty good. I guess that's pretty good. Yeah, so there we go. So this, uh, this is pretty neat. It's got a bit of an updated feature. Whenever you, it'll, it'll create a saved game whenever you uh, exit a ROM, which is pretty neat. So go ahead and select, I guess, Super Mario Bros. Since we just got that, nope, we selected the wrong one. So to get out of the game, you hold down, uh, pop, yeah, start and select, hold those down for three to four seconds. This is the breakout game, Arkanoid. So if, yep, so it'll actually save the game. So if you look at your, your drive now, your CircuitPython drive, it'll actually, sh it'll, it'll have that dot save NES file. So you can delete it or, or save it out. Yeah, you might have to delete it if it uh, if it corrupts or something. Corrupts, yeah. yeah. And jump into we're Mario, still working on that. Yep. which I think everybody's gonna want to play with. Yeah, it's fun. No, don't die right away. <laughs> see if I can focus while you play. Definitely one of these games where you're uh, constantly moving around to jump. Especially at this funky angle that I'm holding it on to make sure it appears good on the camera, like that. <laughs> so you can kind of hear how it's able to reproduce a lot of the audio instruments, but just some of them aren't uh, uh, audible, or they don't sound the same. And when there's a ton of sprites, you can kind of hear and see that it slows down a little bit. Yeah, Lamar mentioned that it's pretty phenomenal. This is running yeah, this such is slow hardware. <laughs> uh, freaking amazing. Yeah. So she was quite happy with the results. I'm happy here. with that. So why? Yeah. It's amazing. Um, so so not every run. NES uh, ROM is going to work. Yeah. I believe it caps out around 60 kilobytes. Yeah. Like, for example, um, Paperboy. It will run for like a minute or two, but then it kind of mm -hmm. crashes near the middle of the game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, any any of the smaller games um, will run just fine, like Arkanoid, Miss Pac-Man, um, all the ones that we were showing. Yep. So that one has it has some pretty smart, uh, some nice uh, smartness in there. So there's a little warning. It's saying I couldn't, I couldn't Moloch <laughs> the NES file. Um, so you just reset that like that. And then um, if it won't boot up, I will delete the NES um, saved game. So I'll, I'll go ahead and switch over to my screen capture. And then you can see my desktop. So over oh. here is the CircuitPython drive. There's an NES folder in there. And there are some dot save files. So here's Burger Time, here's Arkanoid. Um, I don't see Super Mario. I guess it didn't save it. Oh, because it crashed, that's right. So we're good there. And then we have one for Tetris. Anyway, if you have a corrupted save file, you can just delete it and uh, confirm delete. Delete that one too. While I'm deleting files, is the gameplay slowing down no. at all? No, not that I see. That's interesting. Cool. So there you go. I also have my, li my CircuitPython libraries, my NES ROMs, my GIFs, my fonts, my CircuitPython code, two different ones. A blink a bitmap, like this is awesome. You can have so much different data here and not have to it's kind amazing. of switch it out because you have that eight megabytes of internal flash mm -hmm. and you have an SD card that you can have even more data. So all this runs right off of uh, the internal flash, which which stores pretty well. I still have four megabytes to spare. That's so cool. Which is like, who, have, who will ever need more than eight megabytes <laughs> or whatever kilobytes? So yeah, very nice. Um,
Should we switch to a different game? Or? No, I think that's good. Huh. Uh, so we uh, that's all the games that we're demoing. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move on to the actual case that this is all in. Really? So there's a number of updates that we've been doing to the add-ons for the case. Last week we showed off the, oh, let me shut this down. Yeah, let's make some cool noises. <laughs> Last week we showed off the little built-in crank that we have based on the ideas from the very awesome play date that was released. That's right. So based on that, you came up with the articulated hinge version of this, which is yeah, what yeah. they were demoing on that. Yeah, so this is out on uh, Thingiverse right now if you guys want to try this out. So we made a, a single print in place part that has a hinge on this end here and then a, a freely rotating handle on this end. So when you put the when you put this on uh, your, your regular rotary encoder, um, you get you get a crank for your rotary encoder. So let's see if I can focus this here, rotary encoder, and then we'll look at um, some bits about it. So it has a flat edge here. It's one of those style. There are some different types of rotary encoders. The ones we stock in the Adafruit shop all have this flat nose, is what I'm calling it, and it usually comes with these extras. So like uh, this little knob here. So our, our little guy here has a flat edge. You just line it up there and it just press fits in there like that. So you have the ability to uh, hinge it this way at 180 degrees, this way and this way. Since it's tied to this, you can rotate this way, right? And then over here, you can see how the, uh, the, the, the handle has this. So how does the, the, none of these pieces come apart, right? That's well, because the geometry inside here is at a 45 degree angle, so it does not allow this to come out unless you break it out. So that's a pretty fun little thing here. Um, and then this over here, you can't see it, but there's a hole in this nub, and then there's a uh, bit of a pin that goes through that hole. And it's still amazing to me that, you know, it doesn't fuse when you have the right amount of clearance. Uh, you can print these hinges. And interesting about this is these, uh, these, print in, these hinges here are printed in different orientations. So this one's going up on the Z, while this one's an overhang, uh, creating a bit of a bridging. So you, you, can, you can achieve uh, kind of double-oriented joints. I don't know how better to say that, but it works pretty well. Now, the, one of the important things to do when you're creating a design like this is you really have to, uh, at least for me, I like to drive it with user parameters, meaning I can quickly update um, one value in my design and then all of the tolerances get updated. So uh, I released it as a file that has all of those user parameters in Fusion 360. And if you're someone who uses like Inventor or SolidWorks, I have a step file. I don't know if those are translate, probably not. <laughs> but uh, let me know if it does. So that's that part. Um, it's on Thingiverse, you can download it now. Yes, PLA, uh, asked Thomas. Yeah, it's PLA. And again, we did test this out in the 90 degree weather. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing melted, so, so it should be no. fine. We left it, uh, Not in the one of the times in the, in the car as well, and it gets like 120 in there. Nothing melted in there either. Yeah, so I, I thought I'd make a box to, uh, to show kind of how it can fold into itself. So mm -hmm. as you can see here, uh, this fans out and then you can rotate it like that. And then you can rotate it back in and then, and then tuck this handle right in there. So let's go ahead and open this. This is just a demo box to show and, and get the, just to understand how, how much clearance do I need to kind of fold this hinge out. So let's go ahead and open it. It does have the snap fit features. Shout out to Lair Belayers. If you want to learn how to make these, I walk through how to make them. So there you go. So inside here, you can, you can get a look of just how far into the case you have to make this rotary encoder. I think if you wanted to, you could probably find a rotary encoder that has a lower profile. That way it doesn't have to be yeah, so embedded. Be. But there's some things to consider. You know, you can't be too close to the bottom. Um, this prints up, like on the Z. And then I'm using the built-in um, hex nut to, to tighten that there. And now uh, this can come off like that. So you have access to it. And uh, you can switch it out for a different color or a different style. Like this one, this one won't fit in there because there's not enough clearance, so I can't use that. <laughs> it's actually why I had mine sticking out. Um, yeah. I still wanted to modify the case for it, but I think it should be fine with just the retractable 
little hand. No, yeah, it's just a different style of it. Like, do you want it to tuck in? I mean, if you do, this isn't going to work right with this because mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's, it's, we're still working that out. I think what I might end up doing is making this into an external gaming uh, device, kind of like our CircuitPython USB foot switch. Mm. This would be a crank gamepad thing that you could have maybe a Stemma cable come out here and it connects directly to, cool. to one of these uh, JST ports here. And that way you have like your own like external thing. Maybe we could put buttons here or something different. I don't want uh -huh. to start my own <laughs> Playdate PCB and like put screens on it. That's too much for me. I just want to make a crank and release it. Not yeah, so Yanni and cable. Thomas are uh, both saying a really good idea for that would be to put a clip on that. So you can clip it onto your belt. Sure. And then Thomas is saying to make it into a steampunk MP3 player. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a good idea. I like it. Maybe we put this to the Pi Portal or something. And then we can... Ooh, like a hand crank... Yeah. Uh, viewer yeah. thing. If you guys have access to a 3D printer, give this one a try. I'm curious to see the tolerances. Um, how does it work on different slicers? Um, Kirby, if you're watching, check it out too. It's, um, I'd love to see how the, the, the Taz's handle it. Um, yeah, you were saying the, or um, Kira, whichever one you prefer. The offset is about 0.3 or 0.4? Yeah, 0.4 is 0.4? My, uh, my clearances. So yeah. let's head, hop over to the uh, thing reverse page and you can see it's up there. Um, yeah, it looks like that, and that's about it. Yeah, the gap is set to 0.04, but mm -hmm. it's easily changeable in the uh, user parameters window if you are a Fusion 360 user. So there we yeah, go. Let us know what is the smallest, because I know for sure that on the Prusa, you're able to do it at 0.3, yeah. and it works really good. Yeah, so those are our little bits. Um, another thing we wanted to mention is like rotary encoders. This is one of the previous projects we did with a rotary encoder. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a volume knob that has a USB, uh, <laughs> it has a NeoPixel ring inside of it, so it lights up. Let's actually plug it in. So this is a little uh, CircuitPython device. It's got the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, is it the, not the itsy bitsy, but the. Uh, it's the trinket M4. Yeah. So this is literally turning zero. up my brightness on the screen. I'm amazed at this though. No, of course it still works, man. <laughs> Circuit Python, man, this is great. So yeah, this is a little rotary knob, and if you take this piece off, whoop, you can see inside it's just a rotary encoder, and it's changing the brightness. Yeah, but so somebody had said, nice I forgot code. where, um, that it'd be really cool to have, I forgot what fishing game. You could put that right on there. Yeah, this fits right on there, and <laughs> you can just make ah, your fishing game. There's your fishing <laughs> game, dude. You just spin it. Boom. <laughs> Look at that. That's great, man. Sweet. So you can get this file, and of course, if you want to make the dial, it should be on the learning system. I'm going to crank up the brightness. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? That's freaking awesome. <laughs> oh, now it's dark. Oh, now it's bright. Now it's really dark. Now it's bright. <laughs> it's dark again. Now it's bright. This is awesome. So definitely check out this project if you haven't. Should I pull it up on the... Uh, yeah, totally. It's like Python, so you can check out all the files. All the code on there should load up the USB drive. Yeah, I'm going to just type in dial because that's the name of the project, I believe. There it is. So just type in CircuitPython media dial and it pulls right up. We have a little video on it and we'll walk through how to set it up. Pretty simple, just one little... Uh, Trinket M0, one NeoPixel ring. You don't even need that if you don't want. I think we have a couple makes on it. And of course, the star of the show is a rotary encoder. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the code. Code is probably on GitHub or internal. Maybe it's internal. Yeah, it's right here, internal. So you can change up the colors and all sorts of things. Make it do something different. Maybe you want to do um, volume instead of brightness. We have a little table, I believe. We have a table of all the uh, codes for mm. the different media controls. Yes. Check those out. It's all in the learn guide. Yeah. I like this. You can just look at our previous projects and like rip off. I them. wish I had remembered because I sat there and remodeled the entire encoder and then. Yeah, I remember. I was yeah. like, wait a minute. I already, I already did, did this. this. <laughs> Crap. Is that on a bingo? Anybody got the bingo yet? <laughs> Modeled something they already had modeled yeah, one. And they forgot they modeled it. <laughs> Chumps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. so that's what we got for the prototype stuff that we're working on. Yeah, a little we bit move of prototype. into Shop Talk. Shop Talk it. Yeah, we got some parts that we want to share. 
Yeah, so be, we've been waiting for these batteries to come in. These batteries, they're available right now. They're still in stock. What? Mind blown. They came in. There's like $7. Last week, I want to say. Yeah. Or on Monday. Yeah, these are maybe. perfect for the Pi Gamer <clears throat> and Pi Badge. Projects. This is why we're so hyped about them is because the 400 milliamp hour batteries that we were using before, look how fat these are. They're like eight millimeters eight thick. Eight millimeters thick. And the 420 milliamp hour batteries are, what is it, four millimeters, three millimeters? 3.5. Three point five millimeters thick, so we can definitely slim down this guy. The main reason why these are so thick is to give the batteries enough room to make sure we're not applying any pressure on yeah. them whatsoever. The so. 400s are, we originally got those dedicated for uh, sandwiching in between feather wings and feathers. That's, right, That's yeah. what they're meant for. Oh, I think that was the three, the 300. Oh, is it? Yeah, the 350 is what we got those for, so. You sure? I'm pretty sure. It has that shorter cable as well, so mm -hmm. it's gonna. Yeah, you don't have to rewrite nice your cables or anything. Or cut those down, so make it a lot more easier to. Correct. Uh, place those on the back there. They're still in stock. We have different ones. Um, we have a thinner one. It's a 350, right? That should be in either tomorrow or later yeah. in the afternoon. It also. Uh, has a short cable just for our uh, Pi Gamer projects, Pi Badge. So you can choose either or. I think the price difference is like a dollar. So let's see. So those are new batteries that we have in stock for the Pi Gamers and Pi Badges. How about speakers? Well, we yes. got this oval mini one. And what's different about this one is, well, it has a smaller Pico connector on it. So it's, uh, you won't have to wrap and coil your long cable mm -hmm. around your. This is like the first thing, thing. that we do now. It's like the dance of installing the mm -hmm. speaker. These uh, have this really nice little adhesive on the front there. So you peel that off and it'll right. stick to the back of the uh, PCB. That's right. On any of the, the Pi badge or the Pi Gamer mm -hmm. or any project. And this is just big enough so you can connect it to the, uh, the port on the back there. These have stickers on both sides now. Oh, I just I realized did not that. Know that. So you can oh. stick it whichever way you like if you Ooh. want the. We've done some testing and sticking it on the either side doesn't really affect the audio. It, it, it will affect the audio if you have like a nice chamber to kind of mm -hmm. amplify the music, the sound. Yeah. Um, kind of like how we did in oh, our cool. cosplay prop projects, like mm -hmm. the, uh, what was it called? The Keyblade thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Keyblade thing. Bingo. <laughs> Forgot what I worked on. So we got those in stock. Check them out. Use coupon codes if you want. Yeah, unfortunately, you can only get like two at a time because of shipping batteries. Yeah. So that's why they're. That's probably why they're still in stock. <laughs> cool. X Robots uses the encoder chip for his Open Dock project. Yeah, oh. it's a great little. Kirby's are saying, "I have a few minutes left on the crank." Oh, he's doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it should take yeah. about 20 minutes to print, give or take, on your speeds. Thomas is saying he's going to try it on a, try it out on the Ender 3D Pro. Yeah, yeah, totally. What slicer do people use? I guess just slicer, huh? That they use with the Enders? Uh, is it Simplify 3D or Cura? I saw Maker Melissa got an, an Ender 3 as well. Oh. I wonder what slicer she's going to use. And, Other uh, things that just got put into stock yeah, yeah, or the stuff. M3 heat inserts. Oh uh, yeah, I love me some inserts guys. We got a pack of 50 for you. It's an M3 size, they're four millimeters tall. So they're gonna work in the low profile projects or even uh, kind of the bigger ones. So these got the knurling effects on the, on the outside. So you're gonna have a really nice strong fit. You know, I actually tried to take one out and tried to salvage it. And didn't work. No, nah, man, it like fuses so good to those oh. edges. Even if you like cut around it I and did. melt it. I did. You oh. can see. You, no. What if you put the heat press back on there and try to. Oh. Yeah, it'd probably be heat it it'd up probably messy. Because it doesn't, guess you gotta it like doesn't pull, pull it out. I know, you gotta like yeah. push it to the side. Yeah. Hopefully it's near the edge. They're not <laughs> worth it, man. If, it's, if you're prototyping, maybe you can yeah, tap it until you're ready. So get two of these, just yeah, in case. Yeah, I need to get some too. Especially when you're Since prototyping. Right. Uh, Thomas is saying he's using Cura on the Ender. Excellent, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, you've been We're prototyping all the well. stuff on Ultimakers, so. Two different ones. Oh. So uh, the, Inventor the Inventor from Flashforge, they have their own slicer called uh, MP Flash, uh, Flash Print. Print. Yeah, and that one has a completely different like toolpath generator thing. Yeah. 
and I'm super happy that it works on both, either Cura on the Ultimaker or this guy. And they're both different nozzle diameters, mm -hmm. and it's working out. I'm happy that they both work yeah, out. So I'm the, curious to see how, everyone, how it works out for everyone else. Yeah. For mine, I've been prototyping everything on the Prusa. Yeah, so that's I, a good there idea. is a 0.1 uh, mm. expansion on the uh, Ultimakers mm. and the Inventor that's needed. So inside of your horizontal expansion, you just put 0.1. One. Cool. That's that a good tip. Horizontal work. expansion. That's that's one way to avoid having to open up CAD and figure out what the heck's going on. In yeah, there. yeah. I like it. Cool. All right. Don't forget, we have uh, also the Rodian encoder. If you need to pick up some, we got them. It comes with all the hardware you need for it. Plus they were out of stock for a while. So. They were. Now we got some more because uh, cranky projects. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like we also used one in the Pit Boy. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Hand, hand cranked Pit Boy. <laughs> Sweet. That, let me see. Yeah. Going through the notes here. I think it's time for community makes. Community makes. Um, ba -da -bum. This, this week. Make. Time lapse Tuesday. Planter. It's summertime. Plant some plants. Yeah. We need more of them. So I'm gonna guess this is supposed to be themed to around Game of Thrones. Mm. Post Game of Thrones. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the cool features about this is the cool moat on the sides there. So when you fill up the little towers on the top there should go down to the moat and then you're able to have That's your cool. plant suck up all the water there. That this is a real so plant. Nice. Yeah, it's a succulent, yeah? Yeah, so all the plants that we use for all these are all real, so. This is really risky to do this, Pedro, water on our turntable and our paper background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna fall apart. Yeah, so it is watertight, nothing leaked through. And it looks beautiful outside. I should have brought it out, but I'm so pretty it's sure it's all So it's watertight. It's watertight. It's manifold. Doesn't leak. Does not leak. Wow! Look at that. Unless you overfill it. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I really like the detail on the top of the towers. There, you can see the uh, steps going down. All have the water sort of drained down to the bottom. That's very fun. Planter. So you have a little self-watering moated castle themed planter. Fits in your Excellent hand. Did you job. scale it at all? Ah, uh, no. Prints just as is. Prints no as supports is. on it. Sweet. I like it. Excellent. Well, check it out if you are into this theme and you want to make a planter for your cute new plant. Give it a nice home. Excellent. So that's what we got this week on uh, Community Makes. Now we have a couple of Community Makes down in the description of the YouTube video. Let's pull up this first one here. BLE motorized slider. What? The BLE motorized slider. This one has a rotation axis. This is great. This is what wow. I wanted to do. So it's got that extra motor that's hanging off the ledge there. Um, so a little description there. He created a hybrid design kind of using, that's really a nice way to do it. It's just pick from here, pick from mm -hmm. there, remix it, make it a better um, version that works for you. And uh, yeah, there you go. This is very, very good model so here are the updates just some plates updates to it so really cool very oh, nice cool. you've got a gear on there oh, yeah cool. Very cool that's the way it, it pans and tilts at the same mm -hmm. time i'm definitely due for uh mk4 or 3 with the circuit python i want to have uh the feather uh feather motor wing and an oled display so we can kind of manage and you won't have to use bluetooth that'd be really nice I'm kind of thinking out of my head over here so <laughs> sorry about that uh, we got this tripod adapter for the Celestron telescopes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we made a, a, a little uh, person here modified to work on his tripod. Oh, so that was great. Cool. He was able to pull that out. Awesome. So we did a, a tripod adapter, lens adapter for our, an iOS device to work with our, um, our Celestron telescope that we actually carry in the shop. So it's a learn guide if you want to get some really close photos of the moon. You can do that with your iOS device. I don't know if this fits the new phone. Oh, it does. I it updated X. it, yes. Yeah. Look at that. Way to go. So and got that, that should work with the XS as well. And then the last bit we'll share is this gun blade. Final Fantasy. So this was printed on the CR-10S from Creelty. 0.2 layer height. Slamming. That's Bingo. Good. <laughs> there you go. So there you go. That's good. That's great. Nice classic design. All right, and that's this week's Community Makes. We, we um, encourage everybody to post makes. <laughs> They're fun. We really appreciate it. And uh, come on the show and tell. 
Those are always fun too. What else have we Just done? running <laughs> through these. Yes, Kira one four point one. Yeah, I still got to download it. Wait, is it four oh one? Is the one that I have? Tom's the same. Four point yeah. one just came Some out. Came out yeah, I have four point one. Okay. okay, good. I need to update. Yes, definitely. Mine. Check it out. They fixed um, some yeah. stuff in Wi-Fi connecting. Cool. Let me jump back over to this model. Um, I did a layer by layer. Uh, was it yesterday? I'm starting to do some called layer by layer weekly, where mm -hmm. I just kind of talk about the progress that happened all the week. And this one, we talked about um, how to use the managed loss projections inside of Fusion. So if you're ever using external components and you update that component and, and then you open up a previous design, it'll warn you and get it'll, updated, it'll yeah. tell you how to, uh, you, can, you can repair uh, broken referenced links now, which is really nice. So I talk about that in the layer by layer and uh, we walk through it, what happens when things go wrong <laughs> as normal. And uh, yeah. They always do. Yep, so we got a really nice uh, model of the Pi badge. It has super accurate components. The last one we did was the SD, the micro yeah. SD card slot. Um, shout out to Dimitri, who's a, a uh, con contributor on GrabCAD. Um, I talk about it in the Lair Belair and I shout him out and I have links to uh, that, that individual component. And I'm starting to upload uh, components that I draw um, in Fusion. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to push those out on GitHub to kind of pay it forward because I think folks um, it's so nice when you're looking for a model that's very detailed and you find it and it's really good. It's like, yes, it's awesome. It saves so, a lot of time. Yeah, it saves me a lot of time. The, notably, um, the things that I drew on here, I still need to get out is the, uh, definitely the, the stick, the, the analog thumbstick. I, mm. I, I drew that one out, so I need to get that one out. And what else? Uh, the, the reset button is, is different. I couldn't find a good one, so I had to draw that. And I think the speaker too, yeah, the over speaker was something I had to put together as well. It's pretty accurate, so it fits perfectly right on that silk screen too. Sweet. Cool, so that's the model, check it out. There's a blog post about it in the, and it's linked in this description of YouTube. Spinning around. <laughs> Print in place. Yeah, so it's Fusion uh, should be a free download. Uh, if you're looking to play around with Fusion, you can go with the Maker license or the Educationer license. It's free to download. Just give them a bogus email. <laughs> no, make it make an account so that you can uh, you can take advantage of the cloud and all that stuff. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Um, I believe we reached the end of the show. Let's let's send it off with uh, tonight. We have show and tell. It's going to be on at 7:30 p.m. Come out and, and and show us what you're working on. Progress, retro tech, all that stuff's great. It doesn't have to be physical stuff. It could be software things as well. We love that. Work in progress as well. Always great to see those. And right after that, a full hour of Ask an Engineer with Mar and Phil. Check out all the cool things happening in Adafruit, new products, of course, all the secret things that are being worked on in the background. Definitely tune in for that. You win a prize at the yep. end of the show. You get to call in. Always fun. And yep. then tomorrow, tune in for John Park's workshop. So you can tune in, see how to build all these games that we demoed. Yeah. Look at a lot of um, like how to build sprites, animations, how to polish your game. Of course, all the coding inside of MakeCode Arcade. Definitely don't miss that. And you can check out the full playlist of him uh, building a game from scratch. Yeah, I'm referencing a lot of it. It's, yeah. uh, it's like the number one source right now to kind of get a good insight mm -hmm. into the black box that is MakeCode Arcade. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Cutting edge, man. Mm -hmm. Cutting edge so much like I cut some of my fingers. <laughs> That's going to be it from us. Uh, don't forget the coupon code is print in place. Number expires up. at 1159 p.m. tonight. Works on everything except software and subscriptions which you should probably sign up for. That's a Abox.com, I think That's they're gonna idea. start shipping. In June. When did I see that, yeah. In June, oh, look at that, it's June 5th. Hey, it's June. You so might get it tomorrow. <laughs> definitely wanna sign up for that before we run out of spots. We only have a limited number of spots to ship these boxes out. Make sure these all get made in time. Box so box. you don't wanna be left out. Box your box. Get all on that. Get on it. All right, well. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Thank you all for joining yeah, we'll us. We'll see you later week. tonight. That's always fun. Thank you guys so much. Good luck with all your maker endeavors. And don't forget, 
to make a great day. See you next week, guys. Bye. Uh, this one.